हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू करियर पावर हैदराबाद पावर बाय आडा 24/7 स्टूडेंट्स दिस सेशन इज अ विसेक्शन वाइज रिवीजन अ वीकली रिवीजन सो प्लीज बी पेशेंट ऑफ 1 आवर दिस सेशन विल बी ऑफ 1 आवर सो प्लीज फॉलो दिस सेशन शेयर दिस सेशन विद योर फ्रेंड्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ऑल द बैंक अपकमिंग बैंक एग्जामिनेशंस एज़ वेल एज़ एसएससी एग्जामिनेशंस सो इफ यू लाइक आवर कंटेंट डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब आवर YouTube चैनल also share the channel with your friends join the telegram app for this pdf and do download the career power hyderabad app we'll provide the link in the description as well as in the comment section so let us go into the section wise revision and the first section for today is national news so the first question for today union minister nitin gadkari has inaugurated india's first private lng uh, facility plant at which of the following city so nitin gadkari has launched india's first private lng facility at which of the following city the answer is nagpur the answer is nagpur so if you see the details so union minister for road transport and highways nitin gadkari has launched this first private liquidified natural gas plant in nagpur so this will be present in the nagpur jabalpur highway which is constructed by the baidyanath ayurvedic company so this lng if you see the details about lng which is a clean and pollution free uh, uh, fossil fuel which is a cost effective easy to transport and reduces the logistics cost these are all the benefits of lng also remember points like maharashtra chief minister uddhav thakre and maharashtra governor bhagat singh koshoria so please remember all these points so next question for today the indian council for cultural relations will set up banga bandhu chair at delhi university to promote diplomatic ties between which of the following countries with india so the indian council for cultural relations will set up the banga bandhu chair at delhi university to promote diplomatic ties between which country and india the answer is bangladesh the answer is bangladesh so if you see the news so delhi university will set up this banga bandhu chair so an mou has been uh, uh, agreed between the indian council for cultural relations and delhi university so this uh, bangabandhu chair is to honor the bangladesh founding father sheikh mujibur rahman and also to commemorate the 50th anniversary of bangladesh liberation and also india's ties with bangladesh so for this uh, we launched this uh, chair bangabandhu chair so this chair will focus on the common heritage of both the countries and subjects like all the subjects history buddhist studies geography history modern indian languages bangla music fine arts political science international relations and sociology so these are all the details about the bangabandhu chair so now learn about the indian council for cultural relations which is an autonomous organization mainly involved in the indian external cultural relations so this was established in 1950 by maulana kalam azad he was the first minister of independent india so this ICCR is headquartered in Delhi also remember Bangladesh capital Dhaka Bangladesh currency Bangladeshi Dhaka so please remember Dhaka and Dhaka so next question rail cargo movement between india and which of the following country gets a big boost so rail cargo movement between india and which of the following country gets a big boost the answer is nepal so if you see the news so india and nepal has signed a letter of exchange to revive the 2004 india nepal rail services agreement so this revised agreement will allow the all the authorized cargo train operators to utilize the indian railway network to carry nepal's container and other freight so this initiative was launched under the nibar first so this will help the nepali railway company also to run their wagons in the indian railway network okay so nepal capital kathmandu nepal currency nepal is rupee so please remember next question late harappan era articrafts were found in late harappan era articrafts were found in jalgaon maharashtra so in the jalgaon district maharashtra these late harappan articrafts were present so this excavation was done by bujang r bobde the director of heritage foundation so he discovered this potteries and artifacts at yaval village in jalgaon district maharashtra so the contain mostly of small and big pieces of pottery and vessels so these pottery and vessels were found in white mounds near the nimbalkar fortress so there is a fort called nimbalkar so there they found these uh, entire pottery and uh, these things so they are mostly uh, like 
uh, plain in color with the different types of scales, different types of images and all these things. So these are wheel made. So they came to a discovery that these are wheel made and they are found of two generations like two ages. So one is during the IVC and other is during the medieval age. So it's a twin discovery of these potteries. Okay, please remember all these points. Next question, who has inaugurated research based center for excellence at National Forensic Science University in Gandhi Nagar, Gujarat? So, who inaugurated this research based center for excellence at National Foreign University Science for, for sorry National Forensic Science University? The answer is Amit Shah. So, Amit Shah has inaugurated this center for excellence mainly for research and analysis of narcotics, drugs, and psychotropic substances. So, at the National Forensic Science University in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. So, this will help uh, to free the Indian youth from addiction of drugs and narcotics. So, this uh, center will help in the research and analysis of all the drugs and narcotics. So, Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Ropani and Gujarat Governor Acharya Devrat. So, please remember these points also. Next question. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has launched Beam UPI QR based payments in which of the following country? Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has launched Beam UPI QR based payments in which of the following country? The answer is... Bhutan. The answer is Bhutan. So, if you see the news, Nirmala Sitaraman has launched the Beam UPI based QR payment system in Bhutan. So, this will help to, to help the 2 lakh tourists and businessmen who travel from India to Bhutan. So, Bhutan is the only country after Singapore to have this Beam UPI. So, if you see this uh, Beam UPI, so last year, in the last 5 years, Beam UPI has created nearly 100 million UPI QR codes. So, this agreement has been uh, between uh, the NPCA, National Payment Corporation of India, International Payments Limited and Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan. So, uh, Bhutan, capital, please remember, Thimphu, Bhutan, currency, Bhutanese and Galtram. So, remember all these funds. So, Bhutan is the only country also to have to accept the rupee cards. So, let us see details about Beam. So, Beam is a mobile payment app developed by the National Payments Corporation of India. So, Beam is based on the unified payments interface. So, this app facilitates e-payments directly through banks and supports all the Indian banks. So, UPI means a immediate payment uh, service which allows uh, uh, the user to transfer money instantly in real time. So, these are all the points. Try to remember mainly for bank exam, useful for bank exam, full forms. Okay. So, please remember UPI full form, NPCA full form, IMPS full form. Please remember all these points. Next, Accidental Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar unveiled a statue of Mahatma Gandhi in which of the following country? External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar has unveiled a statue of Mahatma Gandhi in which of the following country? The answer is Georgia. The answer is Georgia. So, J. J. Shankar is in a trip to Georgia, official trip to Georgia. So, in the capital city of Georgia, Tbilisi, there is a park, the Tbilisi park. In this park, the statue of Mahatma Gandhi was constructed and unveiled. So, this Georgia has a lot of statistical importance, strategical importance because it's at the intersection of the Eastern Europe and Western Asia. So, our uh, foreign minister Jay Shankar, he gifted the relics of 17th centuries Saint Queen Ketiva. So, Saint Queen Ketiva is a Georgian queen of the 17th century. Her relics were found in 2005 at the Saint Augustine convent in Old Goa. So, he presented it during his visit. So, Georgia capital, Tbilisi, Georgia currency, Georgian Larry. So, please remember all these points. Very, very important. Next, who has been appointed as the leader of house in Rajya Sabha? Who has been appointed as the leader of house in Rajya Sabha, the answer is Piyush Goyal. The answer is Piyush Goyal. So, Piyush Goyal will replace Tawarchand Gehlot. So, Tawarchand Gehlot is the new Karnataka governor. Piyush Goyal currently is the Minister of Textiles, Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. So, if you see the points, also remember these points. Rajya Sabha Leader of House Piyush Goyal, Leader of Opposition Malika Jin Karge, Lok Sabha Leader of House Narendra Modi, Lok Sabha Leader of Opposition is vacant. Please remember this point because in order to be Leader of Opposition, you need to have 10% of the total strength, total members. In order to be Leader of Opposition, you need to have total 10%, 10% of the total members. So, in a Rajya Sabha, 250 of 10% means 25 seats. So, to be an opposition leader, you need to have 25 seats strength in Rajya Sabha. To be an opposition leader in Lok Sabha, you need to have 55 seats in Lok Sabha. 
So, Congress does not have the second largest party in uh, uh, the house is Congress in Lok Sabha, but Congress does not have 55 seats, they have roughly have around 45 to 47 seats. So, that is why they lost their um, opposition leader position. Okay, so please remember all these points, very, very important. Next question Name the International Cooperation and Convention Center, which recently inaugurated by PM Modi. So, the International Cooperation and Convention. <coughs> Sorry, name the International Cooperation and Convention Center which was recently inaugurated by PM Modi. The answer is Rudraksh. So, this center was uh, inaugurated in Varanasi. It's an International Cooperation and Convention Center. So, the uh, foundation was laid in 2015 by Japanese Prime Minister, then Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. It is well built in nearly 3 hectares of land with a cost of rupees 200 crore and a sitting capacity of 1200 people. So, you can see the pictures on the screen. This is the entire uh, convention center. So, this uh, has 108 Rudrakshas at the center which is roofed. The center is roofed like uh, the Shivalinga. You can see here the roof is shaped like Shivalinga. So, this will pull in lot of tourists and businessmen into the city. So, mainly to provide social and cultural interactions the construction has been done. So, this construction is done with the help of the Japan International Cooperation Agency. This has a lot of adequate security and safety systems so that it can host uh, international events. So, these are all the details. So, please remember. Also remember UP Governor Anandi Bin Patel, UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. Next question. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has addressed the nation on July 15, 2021 on the occasion of which anniversary of Kill India mission? So, PM has a... Addressed the nation on July 15, 2021 on the occasion of anniversary of uh, uh, which, uh, sorry, anniversary of Skill India Mission. So, what is the year of Skill India Mission? Skill India Mission completes how many years? The answer is 6th year. So, Skill India Mission turns 6. So, PM Modi has addressed on July 15, which is the World Youth Skills Day. Please remember this. So, under the Skill India Mission, we have already trained 1.25 crore youth. So, this uh, ministry, the Ministry of uh, Skill Development and uh, Entrepreneurship is headed by Dharmendra Pradhan. So, please remember this point. If you see about Skill India Mission, this was launched in 2015 uh, under which Pradhan Mantri Kausal Vikas Yojana a scheme is uh, presently implemented. So, this scheme aim is to train 40 crore people in India by 2022. Mainly, they will focus on vocational training and certification. So, this program is launched on 15 July 2015 which is the World Youth Skills Day mainly to provide short duration skill training and monetary rewards. So, this program is implemented by the National Skill Development Corporation. So, please remember all these points. Very, very important. Okay. So, next session is the international news. We will go into the next session. So, total four questions in this section. So, who among the following has become Nepal's Prime Minister for the fifth time? So, who is the new Nepal Prime Minister? The answer is Sher Bahadur Duba. Sher Bahadur Duba is the new Nepal Prime Minister. So, he belongs to the Nepali Congress Party. So, his appointment is in line with the ruling issued by the Supreme Court on 12th July. So, uh, Duba earlier, he worked for four times between these years, 95, 97, 2001, 2002, 2004, 2005, 2017, 2018. So, on 21st May, uh, the Prime Minister K.P.O. Sharma Oli, he failed to get a vote of confidence. So, that is why the opposition alliance uh, of uh, the Nepali Congress, Communist Party of Nepal, Maoist and the People's uh, Socialist Party section and a Madhav Kumar faction of the Communist Party of Nepal, UML, they formed an alliance and they went to the president and they asked, it, uh, they requested to appoint Duba as the uh, Prime Minister. But the president uh, declined to appoint either Duba or Oli to the Prime Minister. She dissolved the entire house. So, then it went to Supreme Court. Supreme Court uh, gave a decision that uh, the dissolution of the House of Representatives is uh, not correct. So, it is not constitutionally valid and it ordered the President Vidya Devi Bandari to appoint Duba as the Prime Minister within 28 hours. Okay. So, this is the background story of this entire uh, situation in Nepal. Okay. So, please remember Nepal capital Kathmandu, Nepal currency, Nepal is uh, rupee. Which of the following country recently unveiled one of the world's largest 60 megawatt peak solar photovoltaic farms? So, which country has unveiled world's largest 60 megawatt solar voltaic park? The answer is Singapore. So, please remember the answer is Singapore. So, you can see the picture here. It is the photovoltaic park. So, simply solar park. So, this is located on a reservoir in western Singapore. It has a capacity of 60 megawatt. 
It is built by the Semcorp Industries. The area is equal to 45 football fields. It can produce electricity uh, to nearly 5 wastewater plants. So, the electricity produced from this area can be used for 5 waste water treatment plants in Singapore. It has nearly 1,22,000 solar panels which can reduce carbon emissions up to 32 kilotons annually. So, by because of this floating, because of uh, it is present on reservoir, it is efficiency is increasing by 15 percent because of the cooling effect of water. So, these are the benefits of having a floating uh, solar panel system. So, Singapore currency, Singapore dollar and Singapore capital is Singapore city itself. Okay. So, last question in this section, uh, what is the name of the world's first commercially? Small modular reactor uh, which is constructed in China. So, what is the name of the world's first small modular reactor which is constructed recently in China? The answer is Ling Long 1. So, the name of the small modular reactor is Ling Long 1. So, you can see on the picture, this is the small modular reactor which is constructed uh, in at the Changjiang nuclear power plant in Henan province. It is also called the ACP 100 technology. So, it has a generation capacity of 1,25,000 kilowatt hours which can be extended up to 1 billion kilowatt hours. So, this will help to uh, cater the needs of nearly 5 lakh households in China. So, this uh, SMR small modular reactor is a pressurized water reactor designed mainly for electricity generation, urban heating, urban cooling, industrial steam production and seawater desalination. So, it is very eco-friendly, cost-friendly, faster to construct. Okay. And also, it can be deployed at remote places, it can be deployed on aircraft ship, it can be easily transported, high safety, miniature in character. These are all the benefits of this SMR. Please try to remember. Also remember, China capital Beijing, China currency, renminbi. Okay. So, please remember the capitals and currencies, very, very important. Static GK. In current affairs only, you need to cover the static GK. Also, subscribe our channel. Follow the channel, share the channel with your friends, like the videos, please like our videos, okay, so that it will reach to more of the members. So, please uh, follow this entire session, very good session, long session, helpful for your examinations, okay. So, next question, uh, which of the following has become the first Gulf state to open uh, embassy in Israel? So, which of the following has become the first Gulf state to open embassy in Israel? The answer is United Arab Emirates. So, United Arab Emirates is the first nation to open embassy in Israel. The mission is present in the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange building. You can see in the picture, Israeli's president, Isaac Herzog, newly appointed president, and the UAE ambassador, Mohammed Al Khaza. So, both of them are inaugurating this building. So, they, Israel and UAE, in August 2020, they agreed to normalize their diplomatic relations uh, with the dealing uh, by the US called the Abraham Accord. Later on, Bahrain, Sudan, Morocco, they also are trying to maintain relations with Israel. So, Israel is in the Gulf area, so which is surrounded by all the Gulf nations. So, Israel does not have good relations with them, but now good relations are being built with the surrounding neighbors. So, UAE capital Abu Dhabi, UAE currency, United Arab Emirates, Diram. Israel Prime Minister Naftali Benid, newly elected, so that is why we are remembering it, him. Israel capital Jerusalem, Israel currency, Israeli shekel. So, please remember Israel, very, very important, is in news always. Every week uh, you will find Israel in news. Next session of state news, we will see the state news. So, who is known as the founding father of Bangalore? So, the founding father of Bangalore is Nada Prabhu Kempegowda. Nada Prabhu Kempegowda is the founding father of King Bangalore. So, if you see the news, Karnataka government is trying to develop 46 Kempegowda heritage sites. Okay, so according to the chief minister, they are developed at a cost of nearly 223 crores. So, these sites are to acknowledge the contribution of Kempegowda, the founding father of Bangalore. Also, a 108 foot tall bronze statue is also being constructed with a cost of 64 crore at the Bangalore airport. So, his tomb in the Kempapura village in Ramanagara district is developed with 32 crores. These are all the development activities are done by the uh, Karnataka government. So, if you see the Kempegoda, Kempegoda is a chief at Yan during the 16th century. Uh, he approached the Vijayanagara kings uh, and he wanted to build the Bangalore city. So, he laid the foundation for the city uh, in the 1500s. So, his city contained lot of tanks and uh, a lot of, uh, he ensured equitable collection of taxes and revenues. Agriculturists and traders uh, were uh, co well, like, uh, he was very cooperative to them. He built a watchtower, even today it is strong at the Lalbagh. So, he is credited with building lot of temples. Uh, the Someshwara temple, the Baswanagudi temple, the uh, Gangadeshwara temple, lot of temples he is credited with. It. 
so please try to remember him very good person good personality so he is widely uh, accepted as the uh, the founder of bengaluru city so next question so which state enters the india's rail map as the first passenger train uh, so which state enters the india's rail map as the first passenger train enters the state the answer is manipur so manipur state uh, is now in the india's railway map so the rajdhani express from As assam silchar railway station has, re has reached the Vaingachunpur railway station in Manipur. So, this uh, train covered nearly a distance of 11 kilometers between these two northeastern states. So, th the, the train briefly halted at the Jiribam railway station in Manipur, where the locals greeted the railway officials for thanking them for bringing this railway line. Also, the chief minister of Manipur, B Biren Singh, he also thanked the Indian government. Also, the Vainga Chunpo will be extended up to Impal, the capital city of Manipur. So, then it will have a longest railway tunnel. So, these are the details. So, Manipur Chief Minister Biren Singh and Manipur Governor Najma Hiptullah. So, please remember all these points. Next question. In which state uh, first cryptogamic garden has been inaugurated? In which state the first cryptogamic garden has been inaugurated? The answer is Uttarakhand. The answer is Uttarakhand. So, India's first cryptogamic uh, garden is set up in Dehradun in Uttarakhand at a height of 9000 feet. So, this is inaugurated by the social activist uh, Anup Chautilya. So, this crypto garden, uh, so cryptogamies means uh, the hidden reproduction, they don't have any seed or flower. They are non seed bearing plants like algae, bryophytes, moss, liver frauds, lichens, ferns, fungi, these are all called the cryptograms. cryptogams. Okay. So, Governor Uttarakhand, Baby Rani Maurya, and the newly elected Chief Minister of uh, Uttarakhand, Pushkar Singh Dhammi. Please remember all these points. Very, very important. Next, which of the following state to create new department for indigenous faith and culture? You know the answer. Answer is Assam. So, Assam to launch uh, the department of indigenous faith and culture. So, mainly to protect uh, uh, the preserve the culture, traditions of the state. So, there are a lot of tribes uh, in Assam like the Bodos, the Mishinks. So, their cultures, their beliefs need to be protected. So, that is why a separate department has been established. So, Assam Governor Jagdish Mukhi, Assam New Chief Minister Hemanta Biswa Sharma. Please remember very, very important all these things. The next question, which of the following state has launched a population policy that aims to intensify couples who do not have more than two babies? So, which state has launched this population policy, population control policy? Uttar Pradesh. Okay. So, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister, you know him, very famous personality, Yogi Adityanath. He aims to intensify couples who do not have more than two babies. So, a population control is mainly uh, to create awareness among the masses and the poor, poor to control population to control this will lead to reducing inequalities and uh, poverty so a population policy 2021 2030 was set up mainly to stabilize the population by 2050 and to reduce the population growth rate to 2.1 percent so up law commission has brought a bill called the uttar pradesh population control stabilization and welfare bill so this bill is voluntary uh, there is no force so, to follow these rules, but here, uh, if you are having uh, only two babies or less than two babies, you will be eligible for government schemes. If you don't have, uh, if you don't follow the scheme, you will have restrictions in government jobs, in rations and other benefits. Okay. So, no force, but you don't avail government facilities. UP Governor Anand Bin Patel and UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. So, please remember all these points. Next question, country's first green ATM has been set up in which state? So, grain ATM was set up in Haryana. Please remember the keywords. Grain ATM Haryana. So, grain ATM can dispense up to 70 gauges of grains within 5 to 7 minutes. So, this was established in Faruknagar in near the Gurugan Haryana, which is called, it is named ATM Anupurti. So, this mission works like a bank ATM mission. So, this is established under the World Food Program. So, you can see the picture here. Uh, the woman is collecting grain from this grain bank, ATM, grain ATM. So, beneficiary, they need to type their other number or the ration card number. So, on authentication, the food will be filled in the bags. You can see in the picture, food is filled in the bags. They can distribute wheat rice millet from this uh, bank. But currently, wheat is only being distributed from this bank. Okay. So, Haryana governor, please remember, newly appointed governor, Bandaru Dattatreya, Haryana chief minister, Manohar Lal Khattar. So, please remember all these points. Very, very important. So, the last question in this section, which state government has recently launched the electric bike taxi scheme 2021? So, which state government has recently launched the electric bike taxi scheme 2021? The answer is Karnataka government. So, Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Edirappa, 
we launched this uh, Karnataka electric bike taxi scheme. So this will act as a bridge between the public transport and uh, the daily commuters. So here uh, in the scheme, a uh, lot of exemptions were given like permits, taxes, financial benefits, mainly for the electric vehicle manufacturers. So this program will help to boost the self uh, uh, self-employment, uh, eco-friendly environment and uh, strengthen the public transport. So, uh, generally from residence to the metro station or bus station, there will be a gap, gap of 1 or 2 kilometers. So, uh, these electric bike taxis can fulfill this gap. They can support the commuters to reduce their time in travelling. So, also remember, Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Edurapa, Karnataka Governor Tawar Chand Gahalot, newly appointed governor. So, please remember. Next section is appointment news. Only one question. Twitter has recently named whom as their resident grievance officer for India to follow the new IT rules. So, Twitter has named whom as their resident grievance officer for India to follow their new IT rules. The answer is, <coughs> sorry, the answer is Vinay Prakash. So, Twitter has named Vinay Prakash as their resident grievance officer. They updated the information in their website. So, users can now contact Vinay Prakash. So, Twitter earlier appointed Jeremy Kessel as their uh, grievance officer in India and you know there is a small cold war happening between Twitter and the Indian government so that is why they rechanged they renamed now Vinay Prakash is the new gri resident grievance officer according to the new IT rules uh, which were released in February so all the social media platforms who are having more than 50 lakh users they need to maintain three officers who, are, who must be Indian residents chief compliance officer nodal officer and grievance officer also remember points like Twitter formed in 2008, Twitter headquarters, San Francisco, California, USA. Next is schemes and committees. So there is only one scheme. So center approves a continuation of a, a centrally sponsored scheme, national Irish mission for how many years? So center want to extend the Irish mission for how many years? The answer is five years. The answer is five years. So the union cabinet has approved the continuation of the centrally sponsored scheme, Irish mission. For another five years, the scheme will continue till 2026, and an amount of rupees 4,607 crores were allotted, of which 3,000 crores will be from center and 1,600 crores will be from the state government. So this mission was launched in 2014 and implemented by the Ministry of Aish, mainly to develop cost-effective Aish services, which are the Indian medicine, Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha, Sova, Rigpa, and Homeopathy. These are the treasure of Indians. So, under this NAM mission, in the next five years, we will upgrade Aish hospitals. We will co locate the Aish facilities at PHC, CHCs, and district hospitals. We will set up 50 bedded Aish hospitals and 12,500 Aish health and wellness centers. So, these are all the facilities under NAM. Okay, so remember the Ministry of Aish, newly appointed ministers, Sarbanand, Sarbanand Sonwal. Sarbanand Sonwal is the new Ministry of Aish, so please remember. Next is the business news. Uh, here also only one important question for business news. So, which company will construct India's largest solar power, plaque, power park in the Kutch region in Gujarat? So, which company will uh, the construct the India's largest solar power park in the Kutch region in Gujarat? The answer is NTPC, National Thermal Power Corporation. So, single largest solar photovoltaic project will come up in the Kavada region in Gujarat by NTPC Limited. So, the solar park will have a capacity of 4.75 gigawatt. This is built by the NTPC subsidiary, NTPC Renewable Energy Limited. So, it is an 100% subsidiary of NTPC. The main aim of the government is to make uh, 60 gigawatt renewable energy by 2032. So, that is why they are set up in this uh, solar plant. Also, they will uh, produce hydrogen from renewable sources which is called green hydrogen. So, they want to produce green hydrogen from this park. So, NTPC is set up in 1975, NTPC headquarters daily. Please remember all these points. Next session is a banking session. We have five questions here. We will see all the important banking questions. Very, very important for bank exams. Student, concentrate on banking uh, news. Very, very important for bank exams. SSC clerk, uh, IBBS clerk are cu currently, the exams are happening. So, very, very important banking news. So, see the banking news. RBI imposed monetary penalty and which of the following bank for contravention of various regulatory norms including on lending to NBFCs. RBI has imposed a monetary penalty on which of the following banks. The answer is all of the above. It imposed on Bank of Baroda, Indus Hindu Bank, Bandhan Bank, State Bank of India. If you see this in news, RBI has imposed penalty on 14 banks for non-compliance. So, these 14 banks were given a penalty of 14.5 crores. 
where 2 crore for Bank of Baroda, 1 crore each on 12 other banks and 50 lakhs on State Bank of India. Okay. So, 1 crore penalty on these following banks you can see here. So, please remember all this for non-compliance penalty was imposed. RBI 25th Governor Shakti Gandhas, RBI Headquarter Mumbai, RBI was formed in April 1st, 1935. Please remember all these points. Next, which bank has signed MOU with Indian Army uh, to offer the Defence Service Salary Package for Indian Army under its uh, Power Salute Initiative? So, which bank has signed an MOU with Indian Army to offer Defence Service Salary Package under its Power Salute Initiative? The answer is Axis Bank. So, Axis Bank and Indian Army, they bo uh, both of them signed an MOU, where Axis Bank, the third largest private bank in India, will uh, uh, create a Defence Service Salary Package. Under this Defence Service Salary Package, uh, a universal bank account number will be given to all the military personnel, where every bank, every branch in uh, uh, India will be treated as home branch. So, they will have a lot of facilities for them, uh, to because uh, they uh, work in remote places to stay connected with their families, to send money to their families and to have better banking facilities, this initiative is taken. So, please remember Axis Bank headquartered Mumbai, Axis Bank is formed in 1993. So, next question, sorry, next uh, details, if you see the details, uh, uh, this uh, salary package, uh, a personal accidental cover of 56 lakhs is given and an additional 8 lakhs education grant, total permanent disability of 46 lakhs. Permanent permanent disability of 46 lakh, air accident cover of 1 crore and fee additional debit card to their family members. So, these are all the facilities in this package. Okay. Next question, Max Bupa Health Insurance has entered into bank assurance pact with which country? Max Bupa Health Insurance has entered into bank assurance pact with the same answer Axis Bank. So, bank assurance is nothing but where bank and insurance company will aim at offering the insurance product to the bank customers. So, by offering insurance uh, products to the bank customers, customers can avail a lot of insurance products, they can secure their life and also bank will get a commission. Okay. So, all these uh, Max Bupa uh, insurance products will be available in all the 4500 uh, branches of Axis Bank. Already Axis Bank has a insurance tie up with the Aditya Birla Health Insurance. Now, second will be Max Bupa. So, Max Bupa headquarter daily Max Bupa insurance is formed in 2008. Please try to remember all these points. Next question, Reserve Bank of India has imposed restrictions on which of the following uh, company? Reserve Bank of India has imposed restrictions on MasterCard. So, please remember MasterCard. So, uh, this MasterCard uh, restrictions were imposed on MasterCard because it couldn't uh, compel uh, with the rules uh, pertaining to the storage of payment uh, system data. So, that is why it was imposed restriction. MasterCard was formed in 1966 as Interbank Association which was renamed as MasterCard in 1975 and headquartered in New York. So, what happened in this uh, MasterCard issue? So, MasterCard is a payment system operator which is used by banks to issue debit and credit cards. So, if you see your debit card or credit card, you will find this uh, title called MasterCard. This symbol you will find in every ATM card. Okay. So, this MasterCard was not uh, uh, maintaining the uh, uh, rules uh, according to the storage of payment system data. So, in 2018 RBI has imposed uh, as issued a circular called the storage of payment system data. According to this data, all the system providers are given 6 months of time to transfer the entire data to save the entire data in India. So, earlier data of Indians, Indian transactions were saved in foreign countries. RBI has given time to move all the data to India, but, na uh, but MasterCard have not followed these uh, particular provision. So, that is why a supervisory action was taken under the section 17 of the Payment and Settlement System Act 2007. Earlier, two card systems like the American Express Banking Corporation and Diners Club International were also imposed restrictions by RBI. Now, MasterCard can't take new customers, but existing customers will be provided services. So, existing customers will not have any issues, but the new customers will not be taken into MasterCard. Okay. So, please remember, RBI Governor Headquarter established, you know, very, very important. So, the last question for this section, which of the following bank license has been recently cancelled by RBI? So, which bank license has been recently cancelled by RBI? It's an important co cooperative bank based in Maharashtra. The Shivaji Rao Patil Nilangekar Urban Cooperative Bank. Shivaji Rao Patil 
Nilangekar Urban Cooperative Bank. So this bank license was cancelled by RBI because this bank uh, is in a position, financial position, which couldn't unable, which, which is unable to pay its depositors in full. So that is why according to the Banking Regulation Act of 1949, so this bank license was cancelled and a liquidator will be appointed to completely close this bank operations. This bank is headquartered in Nilanga town in Lathur district. So from now you won't have this bank, the Shivaji Rao Patil Nilangekar Urban Cooperative Bank. Next section is economy section where we will see two important questions. Cabinet approved an increase in dearness allowance and dearness relief from 17% to how much percent? Cabinet approved an increase in dearness allowance and dearness relief from 17% to how much percent? The answer is 28 percent. A very good news for all the central government employees because the dearness elements and also for the pensioners because the dearness relief was increased to 28 percent. So D A and D R are pending from nearly uh, January 1st, 2020. So uh, the D A and D R are now being implemented from July 1st. So from July 1st, you will be getting a DA of 20, 28 percent. But from January to June, uh, you will get only 17 percent DA. So, DA was postponed due to this COVID pandemic uh, uh, financial situations. So, an additional burden of rupees 34,401 crores will uh, uh, be will be bared by the central government now. Additional burden on them. So, this but this will benefit nearly 48 lakh central government employees and 65 lakh pensioners. So, please remember, DA is simply it is a calculation on infl inflation and allowance given to government employees, which was launched during the Second World War by the British in India. So this is DA, DRNS elements and DRNS relief. So next question, wholesale price based inflation eased marginally to how much percent in June? So wholesale price inflation, WPI inflation has decreased, slight decrease. How much it is? The answer is 12.07. So wholesale price inflation has decreased to 12.07 in the month of June. In month of May, it is 12.94. So but it is a double digit from the last three months because of the low base effect. So this inflation is calculated and released by the Ministry of Consumer and Industries. So this wholesale price inflation calculates the average change in prices of commodities at the wholesale level. So it will calculate the average change of commodities at the wholesale level. So next section is agreements. We will see all the important uh, agreements. So first question, so total four questions in this section. So first question, Bharat Dynamics Limited has signed how many crore deal with Indian Air Force for the manufacture and supply of Akash missiles? So Bharat Dynamics Limited has signed how many crore deal? 499 crore deal with Indian Air Force for the manufacture and supply of Akash missiles. Okay. So please remember, BDL and Indian Air Force has signed a deal for Akash missiles. So the uh, uh, cha chairman of the BDL, Siddha Siddha Mishra. So he stated that currently BDL is supplying Akash missiles for both Army and Air Force. So Akash is a medium range surface to air missile which is developed under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. So BDL is a prime production agency under uh, who produces these missiles. So BDL was formed in 1970 headquartered in Hyderabad. So if you see about the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program which is a, uh, the uh, brainchild of uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam mainly to create self-sufficiency in the missile se uh, sector. So according to the needs of India, five different missiles uh, were developed under this program. So you can see here the missiles, short range surface to surface ballistic missile Prithvi, intermediate range surface to surface ballistic missile Agni, short range surface to air missile Trishul, medium range surface to air missile Akash and anti-tank missile Nag. So these are all the missiles developed under the integrated guided missile development program. Please remember, very, very important. So, which country has signed a US dollar 1.3 billion deal with India to develop 679 megawatt lower Arun hydropower project? So, in which uh, country we are going to develop the lower Arun hydropower project? The answer is Nepal. So, in Nepal already there is a project called the Arun hydropower project. So, now lower Arun hydropower project is going to be built with a cost of 1.3 billion. So, this will be developed by the Satlej Jal Vidyut Nikam. So, they will develop this project in Nepal. So, earlier 900 and megawatt Arun 3 hydropower project was built with a cost of 1.04 billion. So, this project will be developed under the boot model, built own operate transfer model. So, it is the single largest foreign investment in a country uh, by India. 
so in nepal so please remember all this point okay so next question which of the following union territory signed a mou with sso ca to become organic by 2025 so which union territory has signed mou the answer is ladakh the answer is ladakh union territory so ladakh has signed an mou with the sikkim state organic certification agency so this mou will implement the paramparagat krishi vikas yojana mission organic development initiative in the ladakh region with the aim to convert ladakh into organic by 2025 the main aim is to make ladakh a certified organic union territory by 2025 so the lieutenant governor of ladakh radha krishna mathur rk mathur please remember him okay so in this program in the first phase 85 village second phase 82 village and third phase 79 village will be converted into organic sikkim is already a organic state a first state in india to be 100 percent organic the use and sale of uh, fertilizers and pesticides is totally banned in sikkim so please remember all these points regarding sikkim so next question indian academy of highway engineers uh, they signed a pact with the university of new south wales australia to set up a center for advanced transport technology and systems so at which city so indian academy of highway engineers they signed an agreement with the university of new south wales to set up center for advanced transport technology and systems in which city the answer is noeda in up okay so in the presence of union road transport minister nitin katkari the indian academy of highway engineers and the university of new south wales australia they signed this fact this will improve the road safety scenario in india so they will set up center for excellence so this will promote the industries and startups both from australia and india in the transportation sector this is the main use of this agreement okay so next section is a defense news only one single question indian navy has received how many anti submarine warfare aircrafts p81 from us based sorry 81 not it's 81 it's p8i sorry p8i us based aerospace company boeing so boeing has supplied how many aircraft still date and which number of aircraft was recently received the answer is 10th aircraft so boeing has supplied the 10th aircraft anti submarine warfare aircraft p8i to india okay so total 12 aircrafts so remaining two will be given by the end of uh, 2021 so defense ministry has signed for these aircrafts in 2009 later on in 2016 four more additional crafts were ordered earlier eight now four total 12 aircrafts so this p8i is a long range marine time reconnaissance anti-submarine wa warfare aircraft which is a variant of p8a poseidon which is developed by the u.s navy so this uh, aircraft is mainly to keep track of the movement of ships and submarines in the indian ocean region and also help during the humanitarian missions that is the main purpose of this aircraft so india is the first international customer of boeing so indian navy has inducted its first aircraft in 2013 boeing headquarter chicago chicago sorry and boeing is formed into 1916 so please remember all these points very very important next section is ranks and reports we only have one rank so the annual un fao food and agricultural organization they released a report called the state of food security and nutrition in the world 2021 according to this report how many people in in, uh, in the world have faced hunger in 2020 so how many people in the world have faced hunger in 2020 it is between 720 to 811 million 720 to 811 million people have faced hunger during the period of 2020 during the pandemic period okay so this report is released by the un fao food and agricultural organization according to this report more, uh, more nearly 418 million people have faced hunger in asia which is half of the world hunger people population in africa 282 and nearly 2.37 billion people they do not have access to adequate food in 2020 so these are all the statistics given so please remember also they gave details about children so children under 5 affected by stunting are nearly 149 million children affected by under 5 affected by wasting 45 million children under 5 who are overweight 38 million so stunting means low height for age wasting means low height for uh, low weight for height mainly due to insufficient nutrition intake and frequent infections overweight you know it is having more body fat than the required amount that is overweight so please try to remember all these points also remember about fao which is a special agency to defeat hunger and to improve nutrition 
formed in 1945 and headquartered in Rome, Italy. Okay, so please remember all these points. So next is the science and technology section. We'll see three important questions here. IIT Madras and which of the following company has teamed up to host the Samvedan program 2021? IIT Madras and which of the following has teamed up to host the Samvedan 2021? The answer is Sony. So Sony and IIT Madras. IIT Madras Foundations called the Parvartak Technology Foundation, their IT hub. So both of them are organizing the Samvedan Sensing Solutions for Bharat. So in this program, Sony has introduced their semiconductor solution board called the Espresence board. So this in this Samvedan challenge, uh, students can use this board to solve India specific problems. So it's a grand challenge for all the Indian nationals. So students can participate in this program and they need to create solutions using this board. So IIT Madras Parvartak Technology Foundation is a technological innovation hub set up with the help of the Department of Science and Technology. Okay. Also remember Sony Corporation was formed in 1946 at Tokyo. IIT Madras was established in 1959. Please remember all these points. Next is about the launch of Geo Imaging Satellite GISAT-1 in August. So who will launch this GISAT-1? The answer is ITSRO itself. So Indian Space Research Organization ISRO, they are going to launch this GISAT-1 by GSLV F-10 rocket on August 12. So GISAT-1 is a geosynchronous, uh, sorry, it's a geoimaging satellite. Initially will be placed in GTO, the geosynchronous transfer orbit. From where it will travel to the geostationary orbit which is 36,000 kilometers from the earth. So this uh, satellite is a weight of to 2268 kgs mainly will do the real time imaging it will monitor the natural disasters it will obtain the spectral images of agriculture forest mineral and other things so the main purpose is at the observation geo imaging of the earth so please remember at isro isro is a national space agency which operates under the department of space which is directly overseen by the prime minister so isro chairman shivan ISRO headquartered Bangalore, ISRO established in 1969. Please remember all these points. Next question is also about ISRO. ISRO has been successfully testing an engine for the Gaganyan program. So what is that engine? The famous engine, propulsion engine. The answer is Vikas engine. So Vikas from the initials of Vikram Amb Ambalal Sarabhai. So Vikas is an engine, liquid fuel rocket engine developed by the liquid propulsion system center in 1970s. So Vikas will be used in the second stage of PSLV, second stage of GSLV and in the core stage of GSLV Mark 3. So this is the use of the Vikas engine. So this Vikas engine was tested successfully for 240 seconds at the ISRO propulsion center in Mahendra Giri in Tamil Nadu. So the performance has tested the objectives of the Gaganyan mission. So for Gaganyan mission, we need to improvise the missionary. So this uh, Vikas improved missionary was tested and successful. So you remember all the points about ISRO. Okay, so next section is books and authors. We'll see the important books. We'll uh, make a quick revision of all the books. So the author of the pregnancy Bible, Karina Kapoor Khan. Please remember the author of the pregnancy Bible, Karina Kapoor Khan. Next, the author of the Ramayana of Sri Guru Gobindji. The Ramayana of Sri Guru Gobindji. The answer is Baljit Kaur Tulsi. So Baljit Kaur Tulsi is the author of Sri, the Ramayana of Sri Guru Gobindji. Next question, the, uh, the art of conjuring alternative, rela alternate relativities, how information warfare shapes your world. So who, who are the authors of the book? Shivam Senkar Singh and Anand Venkat Narayan. So the art of conjuring alternate rela relatives, the answer is, re reality is, the answer is Shivam Shankar Singh and Anand Venkat Narayan. So next question, a struggle within the memoir of emergency. The struggle within the memoir of emergency is a book authored by Ashok Chakravarti. The struggle within the memoir of emergency is a book authored by Ashok Chakravarti. So next uh, uh, book, uh, the author of the book, The Great Big Lion. So who is the author of the book, The Great Big Lion? The answer is Crisis Night. So Crisis Night, young child uh, is the author of the book, Crisis Night. So please remember all these very very important so the next uh, the author of the book uh, urdu poets and writers gems of deccan urdu poets and writers gems of deccan the answer is js iftikar so js iftikar is the author of the book urdu poets and writers gems of deccan so these are all the important books and authors for photo for revision so we'll go into the next session awards 
So let us see the awards. Who is the winner of the 2021 Scripps National Spelling Bee? Who is the winner of the 2021 Scripps National Spelling Bee? The answer is Jaila Aventukot. So Jaila Aventukot, the African American, is the winner of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Okay. So next question. So who has won the Commonwealth Points of Light Award? So who is the winner of the Commonwealth Points of Light Award? Commonwealth Points of Light Award. The answer is Sayyad Osman Azhar Maksuzi. So Sayyad Osman Azhar Maksuzi is the winner of the Commonwealth Points of Light Award. So next question. We'll see ICC Women Player of the Month. Who is the ICC Women Player of the Month? The answer is Sophie Eccleston. ICC Women Player of the Month is Sophie Eccleston. So please remember all these points. Next question. The ICC Men Player of the Month. ICC Men Player of the Month June. Devon Conway. ICC Men's Player of the Month. Devon Conway. So please remember all these points. So who has been selected for the Bahrain Kerala Samajam Literacy Award? Literary Award. Who has been selected for the Bahrain Kerala Samajam Literary Award? The answer is... Omanchari Annan Pillai. Omanchari Annan Pillai is the winner of this award. So please remember all the awards. Just remember the person and the award. Very very important. Remember the book and the author. Very very important. No need to have detailed discussion. That is why we are not having detailed discussion. Because the last week we have a lot of discussion. So please read the PPT or PDF. Very very important. But remember the keywords. Next we will go into the sports news. So, in the sports news, which team has won the Copa America 2021 uh, championship? So, which team has won the Copa America 2021 championship? The answer is Argentina. The answer is Argentina. Okay. So, please uh, remember all these points. Next, whom did Ashley Barty beat in order to win the Made in Wimbledon title? So, whom did Ashley Barty beat in order to win her Made in Wimbledon title? The answer is Carolina Pliskova. So, she defeated Carolina Pliskova to win the Wimbledon title. So, here is the list of Wimbledon championships 2021. So, please remember men's title won by Novak Djokovic. Women's title won by Ashley Barty. So, please try to remember this entire table. So, Wimbledon is one of the four Grand Slams. Uh, which includes Australian Open, French Open and US Open. So, this total four comprise the Wimbledon. So, this tournament was held in uh, the All England Club, uh, 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 the All Indian Club stadiums in the Wimbledon, London since 1877. So, try to remember about Wimbledon, very, very important. So, next question, who among the following has won the Wimbledon Championships, Men's Championships? We already discussed the answer is Novak uh, Djokovic. Novak Djokovic is the answer. So, please try to remember. Uh, so, next, uh, name the Bangladeshi cricketer who announced his retirement from Text Cricket. So, name the Bangladeshi cricketer who announced his retirement from Test Cricket. You know the answer, Mahamadullah Riyadh. So, Mahamadullah Riyadh has announced his retirement, okay. So, next, who among the following has won the Wimbledon Junior Men's title? Who among the following has won the Wimbledon Junior Men's title? The answer is Samir Banerjee. Samir Banerjee has won the Wimbledon Junior Men's title. So, please remember all these points. Next, so which of the following football team has won the European Championship 2020? Also, simply called the Euro 2020. The answer is Italy. Italy won the Euro 2020 Championship. So, Euro de Italy defeated England to win this Euro 2020 final. So, this will be conducted by the Union of European Football Association, which was established in 1958. So, Euro very important famous matches. So, please remember all these points. Italy capital currency, Italy capital Rome, Italy currency Euro. England capital London, England currency pound sterling. So, please remember all these points. Okay. So, who is the player of the Euro 2020? So, who was awarded the player of Euro 20? So, the answer is John Luzi Donnarumma. So, John Luzi Donnarumma is the player of Euro 2020. So, please remember the Italy's goalkeeper. John Luzi Donnarumma has been awarded the player of uh, the Euro 2020. So, please remember all these points. So, next question. Which uh, state will organize the Kalio India Youth Games in February 2022? So, which state in India will organize the Kalio India Games 2022? The answer is Haryana. So, Haryana state will organize this Kalio India Youth Games. So, please remember Haryana. Okay. Haryana Chief Minister, you know Manohal Arkatar and Haryana Governor Bandaru Dathathreya. So next, who was awarded the Euro 2020 Golden Boot? Who was awarded the Euro 2020 Golden Boot? You know the answer, Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo was awarded the Euro 2020 Golden Boot. So please remember. Next, 
who has become the first Indian to be selected for judging the gymnastic games of the Olympic Games. So, who is a uh, selected as the judge for the gymnastic competitions in the Olympic Games? The answer is Deepak Kabra. So, Deepak Kabra is the first Indian to be selected for judging the gymnastic games. He will judge uh, uh, the men's artistic gymnastics in Tokyo Olympics. So, he belongs to Maharashtra. Earlier, he uh, was uh, uh, the judge in the 2010 Commonwealth Games, 2014 Asian Games and 2018 Asian Games. So, this is his first Olympics. So, please congratulate him. Next, which country will host the 2026 World Badminton Championship? So, which country will hold, host the 2026 World Badminton Championship? The answer is India. India will host the 2026 Badminton Championship. It is the second time. Earlier, it, it hosted in 2009 in Hyderabad. So, this uh, Badminton World Federation will conduct this World Badminton Championships. The Badminton World Federation is established in 1934 and headquartered in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So, please remember all these points. So, where is the headquarters of this Badminton World Federation? So, the headquarters of the Badminton World Federation is present in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The headquarters of the Badminton World Federation is, uh, is present in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. That is why I, I give you the details of the organization, their headquarters and the year of establishment. So, this type of questions also will be asked in the examination. The headquarter of the Badminton World Federation. So, here you can see we already discussed the headquarters. Okay. So, next question, name the singer of the Tokyo Olympics cheering song, Hindustani Way. So, Indian Olympic Association, uh, they created a song, uh, Cheer for India, the Hindustani Way. So, who is the singer of this song? The answer is Ananya Birla. So, Ananya Birla and the music master A.R. Rahman, so they composed this song. So, the singer is Ananya and it is composed by Rahman. It is titled Cheer for India, Hindustani Way which is launched by the Ministry of Youth Affairs, Anurag Thakur. So, please remember, Anurag Thakur is a newly appointed Ministry of, Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports. Please remember, very, very important. So, Bab Baba Azam, he recently became the fastest batsman to score 14 ODI centuries. So, he achieved this feat in how many innings? 81 innings. So, in his 81st innings, Baba Azam has scored 14 ODI centuries. So, this happened at the third ODI against England in the Eggbatston Stadium in United Kingdom. So, earlier in 82 innings it was Maglanin, in 84 innings it is Asim Amla, in 98 innings it is David Warner and in 103 innings it is Virat Kohli who achieved this feat. So, please remember. Next question. So, which of the following team will represent India in the AFC World Club, Women Club Championships? So, which team will represent India in the AFC Women Club Championships? The answer is Gokulam Kerala FC. So, Gokulam Kerala FC is the champion of the 2019-2020 Indian Women League. So, they will represent India in the AFC, Asian, uh, Asian Football Confederation Women Club Championships. Okay. So, please remember all these points. Very, very important. Let's go into important days. What of what will go, uh, will revise all the important days. Please subscribe our channel. Uh, people are watching but they are not subscribing please subscribe please like please share the channel with your friends so that it will reach for many of the aspirants so national fish farmers day is observed on national fish farmers day is observed on 10th july so national fish farmers day is observed on 10th july so please remember world population day is observed on world population day observed on 11th july World Population Day observed on 11th July. Also, the theme for this year is the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on fertility. The impact of COVID-19 pandemic on fertility. So, please remember all these points. And also remember United Nations Population Fund Headquarter, New York. And fund is established in 1969. Please remember all these points. So, next question. The theme of World Population Day. So, the theme of World Population Day, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on fertility. The impact of COVID-19 pandemic on fertility is the theme of World Population Day. Next question. United Nations have declared which day as the World Malala Day to honor the young artist Malala Yousafzai. So, United Nations has declared uh, World Malala Day to honor the young activist Malala Yousafzai. The answer is 12th July. So, the birthday of Malala Yousafzai, 12th July is celebrated as the World Malala Day. So, there is a huge list about Malala. So, the funds collected by her or the awards given to her. Please try to remember, we already discussed very, very important personality Malala. Malala Yousafzai. Next question, the World Youth Skills Day is observed on World Youth Skills Day is observed on July 15. Please remember, World Youth Skills Day is observed on July 15. Very, very important. 
World Youth Skills Day observed on July 15 and the theme for this year is Reimagining Youth Skills Post Pandemic Reimagining Youth Skills Post Pandemic Reimagining Youth Skills Post Pandemic So here only the question again the theme of World Youth Skills Day is you know the answer Reimagining Youth Skills Post Pandemic So for important days try to remember the day and as well as the theme very very important day and theme you need to remember both very very important Okay so next we will see the obituaries the persons uh, in news so first one dr pk warrior he recently passed away at the age of 100 so he belongs to which fields so dr pk warrior is a famous ayurvedic physician so he is called the doin ayurvedic doin ayurvedic medicine doin uh, the boss of the entire ayurvedic medicine so he is the chief uh, physician and the managing trustee of the aryavaidya sala which is present in kotakal in kerala so which uh, uh, protects uh, which uh, has a heritage good heritage in uh, ayurveda so he uh, passed away recently next ashpal sharma he passed away recently he belongs to which fields ashpal sharma he passed away recently he is a famous cricketer so he belongs to the 1983 world cup team ashpal sharma so his great contribution he is the second highest sco scorer after kapil dev in this entire world cup tournament so he passed away recently so ashpal sharma so next question mr wonderful Mr. Wonderful. So, who is called Mr. Wonderful? Paul Andorf. So, Mr. Wonderful, Paul Andorf, he passed away recently. He is a famous. So, he is a famous wrestler. So, his profession is, he is a wrestler, famous wrestler. So, he belongs to the World Wrestling Federation, World Champion Wrestling. He participated in all these events. He is also inducted into the World Wrestling Entertainment Hall of Fame. So, he is a famous Mr. World Paul Andorf. So, please remember all these points. Last section, the miscellaneous section, we will see the four important questions in this miscellaneous section. Which of the following movie has been recently added to the National Film Archive of India? So, which of the movie has been recently added to the Film Archive of India? The answer is PK. So, Rajkumar Hinani's movie, 2014 film PK, has been inducted into this National Film Archive of India. So, the film director, you can see in the picture, Raj Kumar Hirani, he handed over the negative copy to the director of National Film Archive of India, Prakash Magdum in Mumbai. So, earlier, PK's movies, like a ago, Munna Bai, Munna Bai, MBBS, sorry, uh, Hirani movies, three idiots were already present there. So, these are the details. So, if you see about the National Film Archive of India, which is a media unit of Ministry of Broadcasting, established in 1964, the main principle is to trace, acquire, preserve the heritage of Indian cinema, to classify, document, undertake uh, the research related to films and to act as a member for the dissemination of film culture. So, which is headquartered in Pune. Okay, so please remember all these points. So, next is which of the following state has tied up with National Insurance Company to ensure the Himalayan Yaks? So, which state has tied up to ensure Himalayan Yaks? The answer is Arunachal Pradesh. So, Arunachal Pradesh has tied up with uh, the National Insurance Company to insure the Himalayan Yaks. So, from now, the owners of these Yaks, if there is any uh, weather calamity, disease uh, or surgical operations or strikes in these areas, so these uh, uh, animals will be uh, provided insurance. The farmers will be provided insurance. So, please try to remember all these points. Very, very important. So, if you see Himalayan Yaks, it is a long-haired domesticated animal mainly present in the Indian subcontinent, the Tibetan Plateau, the Myanmar and also till the extent of Mongolia and Serbia. It can sustain up to minus 40 degrees and it can't uh, live in uh, conditions above 13 degrees. So, total yak population in India is 58,000. So, German Kashmir and Ladakh has the highest yak population in India. Also remember, Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister Pema Khandu, Arunachal Pradesh Governor B. D. Mishra, Please remember all these points, very, very important. So, India's first national dolphin research center will be set up in which city? So, national dolphin research center will be set up in Patna. So, in Patna city, you will find this national dolphin research center, okay? So, in India has nearly 1455 dolphins. So, Gangatic dolphin is India's national aquatic animal, so which is prone to illegal poaching. So, this national uh, animal, uh, aquatic animal, Gangatic dolphin is endangered under the IUCN red list and protected under the Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act. It is a protected animal. So, there are four freshwater dolphins in the entire world. One in Ganga River, the second in Yantis River, third in Indus River and the fourth final one in the Amazon River. So, Bihar is home to the dolphins because it has nearly half of the dolphin population. 
uh, Bihar has these dolphins. So please remember all these things about the uh, dolphins, the aquatic animal of India. So last question for today, Mad Maduwadi railway station has been renamed as which of the following? Maduwadi railway station has been renamed as the Banaras railway station. So you can see the pictures here. Maduwadi converted to Banaras. So this uh, railway station belongs to the Northeastern Railways. So in 2019, then Railway Minister for State, uh, Manoj Sinha, he proposed this proposal. UP government has approved and the Ministry of Home Affairs has given approval. Now Maduwadi railway station has been renamed as, renamed as the Banaras railway station. So these are all the MCQs for today. We call, uh, one, one hour long session of the important MCQs. So please follow our channel. Subscribe the channel, like our videos, share the channel with your friends. Also join the Telegram app. I uh, will provide the PDF only in the Telegram channel. Do download the Career Power Hyderabad app. You know exams are coming near. You need a good coaching. So we provide best coaching for Bank SSE RRB. So do download the Career Power Hyderabad app. We will provide the link in the description as well as in the comment section. So thank you students. We will meet again in important uh, uh, session of MCQs. Thank you one and all. We will meet in the next session.